Can't wait to get your next video game machine. In this 18th episode of Gaming Wars, let's go over what we know so far. The good, the bad, and the ugly of the PS4. As always, if you're wondering what are my favorite things on Amazon, I've linked some shopping lists in the description below that I'll be continuously updating throughout the year. But I made Gaming Wars specifically to help you pick the platform that will offer the most value in exchange for your time, money, and gaming resources. For gamers, this will be an important and often personal decision. I want this video to clear up what we know so far about the upcoming PS4. First, let's talk performance. Five months ago, I went over why the PS4 will have better graphics and gaming performance than the Xbox One at launch. To review, the PS4 has a better architectural design, particularly the 8GB of unified GDDR5 RAM powering both the GPU and 8-core x86 CPU. The benefits will be larger, more detailed worlds, more realistic lighting models, more complex physics and particle effects, higher resolutions, higher frame rates, and larger multiplayer matches among other things. Sony also confirmed the power behind the AMD APU. By making a smart bet on higher bandwidth GDDR5, the PS4 will have more compute units than the Xbox One this time around. Definitely check out that video for more info. While you can't add an external hard drive to the PS4, the internal 500GB drive is replaceable. Since all games must be cached to the hard drive, it might be worth it for some people to install a higher capacity, higher RPM drive for better performance. Now let's cover the standard accessories. Since the PS4 has an internal power supply, there's no external power brick, just a power cable that goes from the PS4 straight into a surge protector. And while it's about the size of a 13-inch notebook, you really want to make sure it has plenty of air circulation for when the fans have to fire up. And it includes an HDMI cable that should go into a full 1080p HDTV to get the most out of the performance. For audio, if you have a surround sound system, it has a digital audio optical outport. Otherwise, the audio is also carried via HDMI straight to the TV. And even though the PS4 supports Wi-Fi, nothing really beats an Ethernet cable running from the PS4 directly to the router, especially if you have a lot of devices clogging up your local Wi-Fi network. And Ethernet is really the most secure way to do the day one update that turns on some features we'll cover throughout this video. But before we get into that, the most important accessory for any gaming platform is the controller. When you first get the PS4, you'll need to pair the controller by physically connecting it to one of the USB ports in the front. The DualShock 4 wireless controller should get the same battery life as its predecessor. And while the PS4 comes with a micro USB cable, there's also a new cradle that lets you charge the controllers independently. So except for battery life, the DualShock 4 is better than the DualShock 3 in every way. The motion sensor is more responsive, the enhanced rumble now uses multiple vibration motors, and it has less latency. And Sony included new features developers can use to make the games more immersive. The integrated touchpad supports drag and drop, flicking, multi-touch, and it can be used as a clickable input. In Killzone Shadowfall, the light bar changes color when health runs low. Also, the PlayStation camera uses the light bar to detect and track the position of the controllers. And the integrated speaker can be used to enhance specific audio noises. But in the end, it will really be up to developers to use or ignore these features. One feature that will work at launch is the share button. Because the PS4 constantly records gameplay footage in the background, whenever you press the share button, you can post a video to Facebook, screen shots to Facebook and Twitter, or live streams to Ustream and Twitch. But certain areas in the video game can be restricted by developers. Now, all game audio can be output to standard headphones via the headset jack in the controller. If you game on your PC, the controller will also hook up via USB. And finally, some cool colors will be available at launch. The PS4 will also come with a mono headset out of the box for voice chat and performing voice commands. And while some third-party headsets may support basic audio and chat functions, Sony's not guaranteeing full compatibility. So now let's switch gears a bit. If the hardware forms the structure and foundations of a platform, it's the software that brings it to life. The PS4 is all built on a relatively low overhead operating system. The PlayStation Dynamic Menu GUI offers more control over notifications, messages, friend requests, trophies, and download status, among other things. It can automatically download system updates, and the web browser is based on WebKit technology. But unfortunately at launch, the PS4 does not support client functionality for media servers. In the end, a console is only as good as its games. 
So at launch, Sony will have these first-party titles ready, but the big news is how many of these third-party titles will run at higher native resolutions and frame rates on the PS4 compared to the Xbox One. Again, check out Chip Wars episode 21 to learn why. And these will be the indie titles available at launch. The prices will range from free to play, all the way up to $59.99. For distribution, you can still buy games physically at a retail store, or you can get digital copies directly from the PlayStation Store on the PS4, or from the Sony Entertainment Network online via a PC or the PlayStation app. The games will automatically download to the PS4 while in standby mode. But it will be up to publishers to ultimately decide how and when their games will be distributed. As we learned in Gaming Wars 16, Sony put Microsoft to shame at this year's E3 conference. PlayStation 4 won't impose any new restrictions on the use of PS4 games. PS4 supports used games. As the details emerged, they can trade in the game at retail, sell it to another person, lend it to a friend, or keep it forever. PlayStation 4 disc-based games don't need to be connected online to play. You can also access your digital game collection from any internet-connected PS4 while you're logged in, only one console at a time. And a max of four gamers can be simultaneously logged on to a single PS4 system. Now for some downsides. You cannot suspend and resume across different games at launch, and while there will be no backwards compatibility with PS3 games, some games will be cross-platform, meaning you can digitally upgrade some PS3 games to the PS4 versions. Now let's talk PlayStation Network Services. Online multiplayer requires the primary PS4 user to be a PlayStation Plus member, but everyone else logged into the PS4 will also share this functionality. The primary user also gets automatic game patch downloads, instant game collection, which is access to a free collection of games refreshed every month, and saving games online, among other things. Without PlayStation Plus, you can still use some of Sony's network services like buying or renting music, movies, and TV shows, texting and using voice chat, playing PS4 games remotely using the PS Vita system, and browsing the web. And the future of buying PS4 games may be the PS Store and its digital distribution platform. The PS4 can play supported games after downloading just a part of the data, while downloading the rest in the background. Also, you can access your game content from any other PS4 after logging in. And whatever content downloaded to your primary console will be available to play for everyone in the house. But there are some downsides. At launch, the PS4 doesn't support MP3 playback, CD audio, or DLNA interoperability, which basically allows the PS4 to function as a media server. Now how about some accessories? These Sony PS3 peripherals are completely compatible with the PS4. And if you have the PS Vita, you can stream your PS4 games via Wi-Fi. But for this to work best, again, you probably want to connect the PS4 directly to an 802.11n router with an Ethernet cable. There will be no support for DualShock 3 controllers or the PlayStation 3 Blu-ray remote. And if you like what the Kinect does for the Xbox, Sony also offers an updated PlayStation camera that stereoscopically senses depth and position. With the camera, the PS4 can log in gamers with face recognition, translate body movements and voice input in certain games, recognizes the DualShock 4 light bar to judge the position of players, and boost the accuracy of the PlayStation Move controllers. It uses four integrated microphones, and at launch will support games that use augmented reality technology, like AR Hockey. But the PS4 isn't just about playing games. The Day One system software update will enable Blu-ray and DVD movie playback, running the discs at higher speeds than the PS3. And the team at Sony is still working on some features that won't be ready at launch. For example, sharing the controller over the internet to assist a friend stuck in a part of a game, suspending and resuming within a game, and wireless stereo headset support. And these will be the prices and launch dates. And I personally expect this console to be in really short supply, especially after the launch in Europe and Latin America. So if you'd like to support the channel and order the PS4 and any of its accessories, make sure you check the Amazon links below to make sure you get one before it's too late. Now's the time where I personally thank all the most recent subscribers. Welcome to this channel, a place where I try my best to share ideas and opinions about innovative things that might one day qualify to be our next digital appliances. I always read every single comment, and thanks in advance for liking and sharing these videos on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, and Reddit. They definitely take a lot of work and research, but your comments always keep me motivated. If you really liked this video, click the squares from your computer, or check the links below to watch related episodes, especially Chip Wars 21, where I talk about why multi-platform games will perform better on the PS4. 
In the next video, I plan on introducing a new series that I'm tentatively calling Platform Wars. In this series, we can look at how the titans of the tech industry are turning devices into appliances, and where we are not just buying products, but we're actually buying platforms. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And as always, thanks for your support here on...